To the Lord our God belong mercies and forgiveness. Though we have rebelled against him, neither have we obeyed the voice of the Lord our God to walk in his laws which he set before us. Hello, good evening, welcome to St Mary's Halesworth for our said even song with hymns. The King of Love, my shepherd is, if you're following the orange book, 4649, 649. Beloved brethren, the scripture moveth us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, and that we should not dissemble nor cloak them before the face of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, but confess them with an humble, lowly, penitent, and obedient heart, to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. And although we ought at all times humbly to acknowledge our sins before God, Yet ought we most chiefly so to do when we assemble and meet together to render thanks for the great benefit that we have received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his most holy word, and to ask those things which are requisite and necessary as well for the body as the soul. Wherefore I pray and beseech you as many as are here present to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice unto the throne of the heavenly grace, saying after me. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, spare thou... 
their dad, sorry, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus, our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, and hath given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and to pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins, he pardoneth and absolveth all them that truly repent and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, let us beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Psalm 86, from the traditional Psalter. Bow down thine ear, O Lord, and hear me, for I am poor and in misery. Preserve thou my soul, for I am holy. My God, save thy servant that putteth his trust in thee. Be merciful unto me, O Lord, for I will call daily upon thee. Comfort the soul of thy servant. For unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. For thou, Lord, art good and gracious, and of great mercy unto all them that call upon thee. Give ear, Lord, unto my prayer, and ponder the voice of my humble desires. In the time of trouble I will call upon thee, for thou hearest me. Among the gods there is none like unto thee, O Lord. There is not one that can do as thou dost. All nations whom thou hast made shall come and worship thee, O Lord, and shall glorify thy name. For thou art great and dost wondrous things, thou art God alone. Teach me thy way, O Lord, and I will walk in thy truth. O knit my heart unto thee, that I may fear thy name. I will thank thee, O Lord my God, with all my heart, and will praise thy name for evermore. For great is thy mercy toward me, and thou hast delivered my soul from the nethermost hell. O God, the proud are risen against me, and the congregations of naughty men have sought after my soul, but have not set thee before their eyes. But thou, O Lord God, art full of compassion and mercy, long-suffering, plenteous in goodness and truth. O turn thee then unto me, and have mercy upon me. Give thy strength unto thy servant, and help the son of thy handmaid. Show some token upon me for good, that they who hate me may see it and be ashamed. Because thou, Lord, hast holpened me and comforted me. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Here beginneth the ninth verse of the 38th chapter of the book of Isaiah. The writing of Hezekiah, king of Judah, when he had been sick and was recovered of his sickness. I said in the cutting off of my days, I shall go to the gates of the grave. I am deprived of the residue of my years. I said, I shall not see the Lord, even the Lord in the land of the living. I shall behold man no more with the inhabitants of the world. Mine age is departed and is removed from me as a shepherd's tent. I have cut off like a weaver my life. He will cut me off with a pining sickness. From day even to night wilt thou make an end of me. I reckoned till morning that as a lion, so will he break all my bones. 
from day even to night, wilt thou make an end of me? <clears throat> like a crane or a swallow, so did I chatter. I did mourn as a dove. Mine eyes fail with looking upward. O Lord, I am oppressed. Undertake for me. What shall I say? He hath both spoken unto me, and himself hath done it. I shall go softly all my years in the bitterness of my soul. O Lord, by these things men live, and in all these things is the life of my spirit. So wilt thou recover me, and make me to live. Behold, for peace I had great bitterness, but thou hast in love to my soul delivered it from the pit of corruption, for thou hast cast all my sins behind thy back. For the grave cannot praise thee, death cannot celebrate thee, they that go down into the pit cannot hope for thy truth. The living, the living, he shall praise thee as I do this day. The Father to the children shall make known thy truth. The Lord was ready to save me, therefore we will sing my songs to the stringed instruments all the days of our life in the house of the Lord. Here endeth the first lesson. The Song of the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Magnificat. My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Saviour. For he hath regarded the lowliness of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty hath magnified me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him, throughout all generations. He hath showed strength with his arm, he hath scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts, he hath put down the mighty from their seat, and hath exalted the humble and meek. He hath filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he hath sent empty away. He, remembering his mercy, hath holpen his servant Israel, as he promised to our forefathers Abraham and his seed for ever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Here beginneth the 17th verse of the 11th chapter of the book of John. When Jesus came, he found that he had lain in the grave four days already. Now Bethany was nigh unto Jerusalem, about fifteen furlongs off, and many of the Jews came to Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him, but Mary sat still in the house. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died, but I know that even now whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. Jesus saith unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. Martha saith unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection in the last day. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? She saith unto him, Yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world. And when she had so said, she went her way and called Mary her sister secretly, saying, The Master is come and calleth for thee. As soon as she heard that, she arose quickly and came unto him. Now Jesus was not yet come into the town, but was in that place where Martha met him. The Jews, then were with, the Jews then which were with her in the house and comforted her, when they saw Mary, that she rose up hastily and went out, followed her, saying, She goeth unto the grave to weep there. Then when Mary was come where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying unto him, Lord, if thou hadst seen, been here, my brother had not died. When Jesus therefore saw her weeping, and the Jews also weeping which came with her, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled, and, where have, and said, Where have ye laid him? They said unto him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. Then said the Jews, Behold, how he loved him. And some of them said, Could not this man which opened the eyes of the blind have caused that even this man should not have died? Jesus therefore again, groaning in himself, cometh to the grave. It was a cave, and a stone lay upon it. Jesus said, Take ye away the stone. Martha, the sister of him that was dead, saith unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he hath been dead four days. Jesus saith unto her, Said I not unto thee, that if thou wouldst believe, thou shouldst see the glory of God. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. And I knew that thou hearest me always, but because of the people which stand by, I said, 
I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. And when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound about with a napkin. Jesus saith unto them, Loose him, and let him go. Here endeth the second lesson. The Song of Simeon, the Nunc Dimittis. Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace, according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, to be a light to lighten the Gentiles, and to be the glory of thy people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the Queen, and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. Endue thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, because there is none other that fighteth for us, but only thou, O God. O God, make clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. Almighty God, who hast given thine only Son to be unto us both a sacrifice for sin and also an example of godly life, give us grace that we may always most thankfully receive that his inestimable benefit, and also daily endeavour ourselves to follow the blessed steps of his most holy life. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> O God, from whom all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works do proceed, give unto thy servant that peace which the world cannot give, that both our hearts may be set to obey thy commandments, and also that by thee we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may pass our time in rest and quietness, through the merits of Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. Lighten our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of thy only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And we come to our next hymn. Jesus lives thy terrors now. If you're following in the Orange Book, it's number 354. Number 354. One moment, I'll just uh, endeavour to have my tablet speak to the sound system once more. It seems to have dropped out. We're ready to go again. Jesus lives by terrors now. Jesus lives 
thy terrors now can no more death appall us. Jesus lives by this we know. Thou, O grave, canst not enthrall us. Henceforth is dead, but the gate of life immortal. This shall come a trembling breath when we pass its gloomy portal. Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. We have in our three readings, if we include the psalm as a reading, a piece of writing put into the, put into the mouth of Hezekiah, which reads like a passage from Lamentations, or one of the sadder psalms which we tend to be given to read during Lent and Advent, those more reflective, penitential, broken songs which are not so much full of victory and praise as of lament and woe, grief. So we have Hezekiah speaking of his sense of loss and brokenness and no doubt there are many in our world, in our streets, if not in our families, maybe even ourselves, who could relate very readily to him and his words. And we have in our second reading a narrative which we can take as a factual historical account and or a metaphorical prose poem, if you like, of how it is that God in Jesus may raise us from that state of dispiritedness, of grief, of hopelessness, leaving behind those grave clothes and stepping up and stepping forward out of that stink. And we have a psalm that, if you like, may act as a bridge connecting that despair with that hope, the psalmist cries out on their own behalf, Bow down thine ear, I am poor and in misery. Among the gods there is none like unto thee, for great is thy mercy towards me. Our psalmist believes 
enough in and of themselves, it would seem, to call out to God that God may respond. Yet they falter perhaps just at last, show me some token upon me for good, that they who hate me may see it and be ashamed. Lazarus is, are they sisters, Mary and Martha? They speak to Jesus. And Jesus, bless him, says, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever lives and believes will never die. Do you believe? Martha says, yes. Martha, again later on, believes and Jesus asks her, did I not say if you believe, you would see the glory? And so then the stone is taken away. Martha is concerned because he has been dead for so long that he is already beginning to stink, as they put it here, not shying away from what is taking place as death establishes itself on his body. Three days was the length of time that was left ordinarily for the body to see if there were any signs of life. It would have been buried on the fourth day. And I guess in the dry, warm season, that fourth day, he would have started to go off past his sell-by date. He was therefore properly dead. An extra day, not just three days, as Jesus was dead in the tomb after crucifixion, Lazarus was dead four days. His sisters, I'm just checking because it may actually sound there. Yes, concerning their brother. His sisters called out to God on his behalf. Hezekiah laments and uh, addresses his woes towards God. I like this as a passage of reality and truth. There are those, I think, that feel they must only talk to God when they've got their best bib and tucker on, when they are feeling well and glad and happy. But there are examples throughout Scripture if one knows where to look for them, and this is perhaps one of those. I said I shall not see the Lord. I shall go softly all my years in the bitterness of my soul. The living shall praise thee, the grave cannot. The Lord was ready to save me. I said in the cutting off of my days, I shall go down to the gates of the grave. Our writing opens, our reading opens, or lesson, with the sentence, the writing of Hezekiah when he had been sick, but goes on and was recovered of his sickness. So this may well be simply that first portion. Although he felt hopeless, there is a spoiler at the beginning of the lesson which helps us understand that he might have, might have felt that there was no worth, he might have felt hopeless, but actually God acted and restored him. May God enable us to believe not only for ourselves, but for our church, for our community, for the people of Ukraine, Yemen, Brazil, for our environment, our bees, our polluted air, climate breakdown, and all that worry about all or any or each of these concerns. May we, like Mary and Martha, believe on their behalf and call on God to bring life and to speak life and to speak hope and to call us and them out of darkness, brokenness and, brokenness and stink, the stink of death and the grave, to the whole fragrant fruitfulness of life in Jesus. We may need to be reminded from time to time of that brokenness from which we have come. As we have read that reminiscence of Hezekiah. And perhaps we have God's grace in us as the psalmist to speak with God on our own behalf. Not just that confidence to be honest with God that Hezekiah demonstrated. But also that faith and hope to believe on our own behalf. 
Mary and Martha believed on behalf of their brother Lazarus as he was dead. But the psalmist, perhaps David, believed for himself and called on God. And God acted and reacted and by his grace and favour restored and provided and secured his future for him. May that be our experience and the story that we hear, the news that we hear of those for whom we pray that God has restored them to fullness of life through our prayers, through their own faith. Let us sing again. Our third hymn, Blessed are the pure in heart, again in the Orange Book, number 77. Jesus Christ, thou good shepherd of the sheep, who camest to seek the lost and to gather them into thy fold, have compassion on those who have wandered from thee, feed those who hunger, cause the weary to lie down in thy pastures, bind up those who are broken in heart, and strengthen those who are weak, and lead us all, O Lord, in the paths of righteousness, for thy name's sake. Amen. O God, our Father, who art the source of all life and health, all strength and peace, teach us to know thee truly, take from us all that hinders the work of thy healing power, all our sins, all our anxieties and fears, all resentment and hardness of heart, and help us to learn to enter into stillness and peace with thee, and to know that thou art our healer and redeemer, through Jesus Christ our Lord. God of all grace, who didst send thy Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, to bring life and immortality to light. Most humbly and heartily we give thee thanks that by his death he destroyed the power of death, and by his glorious resurrection opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Grant us assuredly to know that because he lives we shall live also, and that neither death nor life nor things present nor things to come shall be able to separate us from thy love, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. We now take a minute of silence to bring our own petitions to the throne of the heavenly grace.
Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and dost promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come life everlasting. Amen. The strife is o'er, uh, the battle done. Number 667 in the Orange Book. Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen.